This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on National Education Policy 2020, Research, Innovation and Indian Knowledge System in Higher Education. The participants are Anil Sahastrabuddhi, Chairman, All India Council for Technical Education and AIR Correspondent Renu Kataria. President Ramnath Kovind today while inaugurating the Visitors Conference on Implementation of New Education Policy 2020 Higher Education through video conference said that the new education policy aims to reorient the education system towards meeting the needs of the 21st century. He said the policy will not only strengthen the youth of our country but also set the country on course in becoming Atmanirbhar Bharat. The President said that the new education policy has been prepared after extensive participation involving 2,50,000 gram panchayats, more than 12,500 local bodies and about 675 districts. He said more than 2 lakh suggestions have been taken into consideration. Sir, what were the challenges related to education and implementation while preparing the new education policy 2020? The new education policy is looking at Number one, increase in the gross enrollment ratio, which is so important for development of the nation. Higher education was visualizing that it would reach 30% by 2020. We are very close to that. We are nearly 27%. But the new education policy talks about taking it to 50% by 2035. And also there is going to be a large increase in the population. So it means number of students coming into the higher education during this period of 15 years is going to be also added to that uh, kitty and therefore we need to triple the total students into the higher education sector and this cannot be done merely by you know what is known as uh, buildings and uh, institutions and campuses that means brick and mortar infrastructure but we must go in a big way in an online mode this is one part second part is we are uh, deprived of a uh, lot of research and innovation capabilities that we have. We have not explored them fully. Uh, this is another area which needs to be addressed in terms of uh, increasing the curiosity of the students, what we call as the spirit of inquiry, critical thinking. In order to get this, what is required is that a relationship between the teacher and the student has to be such that students should feel very comfortable in asking even difficult questions to the teacher. I think that is missing. Secondly, the nature of examination that we hold in terms of mostly memory-based questions or rote learning, to move away from that and then have questions which will really test the understanding of the subject, the analytical ability, synthesis of information, critical thinking, innovation and creativity. I think that is what is needed and the policy talks about all of these issues and Honorable President very rightfully took the example of Bhagavad Gita while explaining all of this. So you were just now talking about the gross enrollment ratio. The President also said one of the targets of the policy is to increase the gross enrollment ratio by 50% by 2035. What is the roadmap to increase the present 26.3 gross enrollment ratio, the GER, to 50%, especially if we talk about improving the GER in the low GER districts of India? There are multiple solutions possible. One of the things which is talked about in the policy is about starting of universities in all the districts where there is no university. That means earlier we used to call such districts as backward districts in terms of education, but today we call them as aspirational districts. So in all aspirational districts of the country where there is no university, there must be a university setup, which is, of course, in the brick and campus and uh, students who are nearby can easily go and access that education. And therefore, emphasis on online education or open and distance learning is also given. And 100 universities which are top ranked and also those who have got better accreditation score are allowed to run online programs. The entire degree itself can be taken online. That means even if you are in a remote place, you don't have a university or a college in your place, you can still register for the degree program to the top ranking university, but you need access to internet, you will take the classes wherever you are in that particular village or town and uh, you can take the education sometimes through the MOOCs which is anytime, anywhere learning from best faculty in the country available and that way the gross involvement ratio can go by leaps and bounds. And also in terms of those existing universities and colleges because we are talking about multidisciplinary universities, universities which has only subject of arts 
commerce science can add on engineering and medicine specialized the university of engineering can add on arts commerce and science and thereby the existing infrastructure can be put to use at multiple durations of the day and the week thereby we can also increase the gross enrollment ratio so there can be many variety of innovative ways by which your gross enrollment ratio can be increased so we are talking about technology over here and we have seen a lot of research and innovations in the education sector especially during COVID. with time how was adopting to new year technology in teaching learning a challenge for both the teachers and the students the challenge for teachers has been they were not used to this mode they were all the time used to preparing for going to the classroom and engaging with students directly in the classroom now no one is in front of them students are all scattered all over and they have to look at the screen on their computer or the laptop and take the class i think this our people are not habituated and therefore if they sit in one place in the table and chair and then deliver that lecture probably students uh, may not be able to capture the essence of that and they may not find it interesting in the classroom however a small platform that a faculty has a faculty moves around looks at uh, students i think that is not existing here and therefore a lot of training is required for faculty members in order to make the classes interesting and that is one area of challenge which we have to do second challenge is in many institutions they may not have enough infrastructure in terms of bandwidth servers and also capable uh, support staff who can create some animations in order to help students understand the topic i think that is the second challenge third challenge is for students in also by sitting in the classroom is a different environment and if there is no one surrounding you and you are alone in your home how do you handle that and the fourth challenge uh, is in terms of connectivity itself in remote places all the cities and towns uh, may not have equal good bandwidth and therefore sometimes there are interruptions and students will get uh, into difficulties in learning or continuity in understanding the topic which was half way through and suddenly if internet connection goes off i think these kind of challenges are to be now addressed by both uh, the government the institution faculty and the school sir the president also said that india was a respected education hub during ancient time universities as uh, takshashila and nalanda had iconic status but today india's higher education institutions do not get high positions in global ranking does that mean that if implemented successfully the new structure would bring india at par with leading universities of the world as the new education policy is a progressive shift towards a more scientific approach to education there are two things also in this matter that first one is uh, the flexibility which has been provided in the new education policy in terms of whether it is multidisciplinary allowing students to take whatever courses they want in terms of choice based credit system on the other side as well as uh, moving away from whatever program he is undertaking and go to another program if he doesn't fit into that all such flexibilities will add value to the education that the students are undertaking secondly lot of emphasis on research so significant and important in global rankings is also being talked about in terms of setting up of national research foundation and thereby the flexibility which will be brought in in terms of doing research and that is being supported to both private as well as government institutions and that's why innovation as a culture is growth through this particular new national education policy which will help us in catapulting in terms of ranking but more importantly our uh, the global ranking scenario the parameters are not favorable to india for example they look at how many faculty are there from different nationalities how many students are there coming into your institution from different nationalities which they do not realize that for a aspiring country like india where the diversity is so voluminous any institution in india having students from our 28 odd states and different union territories in remote places tribal scheduled caste scheduled tribe there are women there are physically challenged ones all of this is a great diversity they look at diversity only point of view of nationality look at uh, how many languages uh, we have in, in india are they taking care of that they don't and that's why we lose on many of these points the government so far earlier we were not allowing faculty to be recruited permanently from a from abroad now with the institutions of eminence being selected they have been permitted to get faculty from abroad uh, onto their campuses many faculty can be got onto some certain number of years on contract maybe 4 5 years I think this all will help us in improving that
expert group teams, which are uh, collaborative research, which has been also supported through this particular new education policy. In terms of research publications jointly between foreign university and Indian university, a foreign professor coming and staying here. I think many of these academics will have a greater lift in terms of uh, our visibility as well as uh, the actual output. And through this GAN program and this PARC program, there is a lot of collaboration and engagement which is happening and they will look at uh, Indian universities very closely, IITs, ICERS, and thereby they are in a position to appreciate there are certain good institutions even in India compared to what are there in most of the European countries and the North America and South America. When you compared initially about Nalanda and Takshila, and that is the era when uh, our universities were the only universities. In fact, from about 500 BC till about uh, 1088 AD, in the modern era, Bologna University came into existence in Italy. Before that, there was no university anywhere in the world. We were the pioneers in higher education in terms of university education, in terms of residential education, large-scale universities, attracting students from all over the world. But we missed the bus, and this is the right time that we reinvent ourselves and get back to that. Sir, can you also tell us more about what are the challenges of higher education that the students are facing in India, and what are the opportunities that are being provided to the students at higher education of level? So in India, still, we are not a very rich country, and therefore, affordability of education is a real challenge. So when we want to grow from 26-27% of GR to 50%, and also in terms of ranking and improve the research, a lot of funding is required. And therefore, uh, we have to go for a lot of innovative ways. Those who are capable of paying the tuition fees in the higher educational institutions, we must pay for that. And those who cannot because of their poor income, I think uh, there are multiple ways of uh, supporting them, either in terms of giving them fee waiver, scholarships, or uh, providing a bank loan facility which they can pay off later after their graduation is over. Industry also pitching in in order to provide scholarships I think all these mechanisms have to be done. And industry also needs to have a better collaboration with academic institutions, support funding for research, not just the government. Because ultimately the outcome of the research is going to be useful for industry as well. So why can't they also put in their money? All of our uh, targets which have been fixed, whether in, in terms of uh, the gross endowment ratio, in terms of research ranking, in terms of uh, the general ranking uh, in times higher education or QS ranking, all of them are possible to be achieved. For example, some of the small initiatives how we have catapulted, I will just want to give an example of a National Innovation Index. That is globally, they all decide on uh, what is the innovation index of each country. We were standing at around 80 plus just five years ago. Every year we have jumped by sometimes five places, eight places and today we stand at 48 places. So we have covered half the distance and that means we have a lot of potential. So the President also spoke about multidisciplinary approach. How will the vocational courses be integrated in the mainstream and how will students benefit from this? The new national education policy talks about vocation and skill right from class 6. In fact, the education itself starts at the age of 3 and the formula of 10 plus 2 is replaced by 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 as you are all aware. Vocational education starts right at the 6th standard onwards. Whether it is coding skills, whether it is carpentry or welding skills or whether it is electronics uh, assembly skills. The child, when it comes to the class 12 standard equivalent in the future, that is our uh, after 15 years of education and the present 12 years of education, I think at the 18, when it's fully skilled already and choose the path. Someone who is more interested in mathematics and physics and science may come into more theoretical aspect of uh, engineering and technology. Someone who finds that it's more interesting to do hands-on work, he may enter into vocational education. And uh, that dignity of labor and understanding that both are equally important. Someone may get into engineering, someone may get into vocational education, doesn't matter. Each one will earn their bread and each one will contribute towards the GDP growth of the nation, the development of the nation. I think that spirit comes in. The vocational education will be treated on par with the, the rest of the higher education. That is what was needed, long-awaited need, which has been fulfilled through this particular policy. Even if you had made a wrong choice, there are uh, corrections possible. See, I think that is such a great empowerment. Sir, we thank you so much for joining us and uh, telling us so much about the new education policy. Thank you so much. You were listening to a discussion on National Education Policy 2020, Research, Innovation and Indian Knowledge System in Higher Education. The participants were Anil Sahastrabudhi, Chairman, All India Council for Technical Education and AIR Correspondent Renu Kataria.
This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our website, newsonair.com. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.